Hello folks, it's the Egg Meister here. It's been 12-13 years since anything egg related came out of the Egg HQ. A um, little bit older, a little bit wiser. And I was just wondering the other day, if I was to start all over again and to create an Egg Motor 2.0 with all this hindsight and wisdom and maybe a few grand in cash what would I do differently this time? Let me consult the notes. Right, so this is specifically regarding the direct drive four-stroke egg motor. None of the silly nonsense with the two-stroke, which is looking back extremely hilarious and completely naive of me to even think that thing was going to get airborne without a massive shot of power. Um, also, I'm not going to really touch on the re-drive version because um, I had outside input with that, uh, with the redrive itself from Bailey Aviation, which I am always extremely grateful for because uh, I got a freebie off them. And um, it was good of Paul Bailey to do loads of development on that and build his own machine uh, just to prove the concept, I suppose. So what was the direct drive four stroke egg motor for those of you who haven't got a clue what I'm talking about? Well, in, in essence, it was a generator engine derived power motor, four stroke, 200cc, um, pushing 12 horsepower at best, driving a 34 inch prop and delivering just shy of 40 kilograms of thrust, all mounted up in a very basic mild steel chassis with a high hang point harness, I think it was an APCO high hang point harness I had back in the day. Um, very basic, very rudimentary, but it worked. So then, 12 or so years on, what would I do different? Well, firstly, um, I think the, the best gain I could hope to achieve, and this is using my brain, so this could all be wrong, would be to have a slightly different propeller made by Zor, who made all the props in the first place for me, which are large scale model aircraft propellers. Um, I was in contact with Zor a lot during the early stages of the direct drive egg motor. Um, I did my own calculations and I deemed that the 34 inch by 10 inch pitch PJD-P, which means pusher prop, um, would be the one that would best suit my requirements and out of the box it did fairly well. After a while I did contact Zor if they could make a 34 by 9 inch prop, a slightly thinner pitch, because the, the tuning parts on the engine were really for an engine at about 6000 plus RPM and looking back at the old videos if you want to peruse them you'll see that I never really got much above 5,000 RPM. Um, a thinner pitch prop would have helped yield two, three more kilograms of thrust. Um, the downside is it would rev a little bit more. Uh, it would be a little bit noisier, increased wear on the engine. But hey, we're chasing thrust here. So that would be the first thing I'd do. Would get a slightly different prop. The only down I did when I did ask Zor back in the day if they did do a 34 by 9 inch prop, they didn't, but they could, but it would have to be a minimum order of 10 units. And as the props back then were just over 100 quid each, there's no way I was prepared to spend a thousand pounds on a gamble, so that never happened. Also, on the GX200 engine back in the day, I was kindly given a GX390 carburetor from Brian Key um, along with a, a manifold they made to connect it to the uh, head of the GX200. Uh, I was hoping that the bigger carb would it'd yield more air and fuel and I get more power. Yet during testing I didn't get any more power and I think from the high Marnham uh, test launch videos I think I had the GX390 carburetor at that point. I wasn't climbing as well, 
I mean, I might have had the 36 to 10 inch yes. pot then as well, which would have reduced the RPM even further. So that could have been the overriding in factor. Progress. Could have been the prop rather than the carb. But with hindsight again, I think I would rather stick with a bored out GX200 carburetor. The GX390, although would flow and perform a lot better at higher RPM, for starting and for the power band I was looking for, I think a bored GX200 carburetor would be a lot better. Because I did seem to find the engine a little bit more difficult to start with a bigger carb on. Um, and as those of you will know, a four strokes not the easiest of things to start. So yeah, that'll be the second thing. Revert back to a, a bored out GX200 carburetor. The third thing I'd like to uh, change would be to recreate, well, with some tweaks, the chassis I made for the GX270-390, uh, the flight egg. Originally the GX270 um, Mini Monster, I think I called it back in the day. It was a nice curvy chassis. Um, I had one or two misgivings, but I really liked that frame. And I think bare metal weight of that frame was only three kilograms. Yeah, ideally aluminium titanium to try and mitigate the weight of the engine, but yeah, three kilograms I don't think were too bad for the frame. So yeah, the GX270 frame, if you look back at the videos back in the day, I quite like that frame. It also made it a lot easier to add the netting uh, in, a, in a conventional arrangement on most modern paraglide, uh, paramotors. The netting arrangement was a lot easier on, on that than it was on the original um, egg motor. Another issue of the day was the noise. Um, I just had a straight through header exhaust um, and on Sam's second test video where he's climbing quite high above uh, the farm near Pontefract uh, obviously he's on full power for a good 10 minutes and overhead I can imagine that's going to get quite annoying for any neighbours especially when you're loitering in an area obviously on, on a machine that hasn't got a very fast top speed it could be quite annoying so I would like a lightweight non power sapping quiet exhaust of some description if I could so that would require further investment because there's very little investment in exhaust on the original leg motor you pretty much bolt it on and away you go um, the noise was a side issue back at the time I just wanted power, I just wanted to get off the ground clearly power! oh yeah, the exhaust ultimately I was hindered by finances back in the day and if I was to do it again I'd be hindered by finances once more I think a good £5,000 would sort it I don't have any power gliding equipment anymore. I would also need a harness and a wing of some description if I was to test it myself. I'm nearly 50, my back is gone. I ache, I moan, I creak. Time's ticking on, so if I was to rebuild one, would I fly it myself? Who else would be the guinea pig? I don't think it'd be Sam, because he's in his mid 70s now. As fit as he is for his age, I can't imagine Sam would be willing to don the helmet in the motor once more. So anyway, those are just my thoughts. You can wake up now, I'm finished. Um, it would be nice to create a egg motor 2.0. A leaner, more powerful, more aesthetically pleasing machine. Um, but if you've got any ideas or thoughts or comments yourself, especially if you're a hardened egg motor uh, watcher, uh, maybe even a builder over the years, you might have some ideas that uh, I've missed out on. Um, so I'd really like to hear those comments, if you could. Anyway, thanks for listening. It's Eggmeister out.